going on? What's going on, everybody? Big Chet's coming to you live. Joined by our good friend. You know him. You love him. Big Jonas. What's up, my friend? Hey, Chad. What's going on, man? Happy Saturday night. Happy Saturday night, man. So uh, what do you want to say to, to everybody out there? Happy Saturday night. There it is. <laughs> Guys, if you want to uh, find me, I'm on Twitter, of course, at Big Chets. This is uh, Big Chonas. We see him on Twitter. He does a lot of great work with videos. And he has a mentoring program. If you're looking for a one-on-one type of situation, he likes to go over all the uh, different aspects of trading. Whatever works for you works for him. And, uh, you know, of course, you can find me as one of the six analysts and teachers on Bitcoin Live, a project I'm honored to be a part of. We just wanted to talk tonight. Big Chonis and I were not advisors. We're just good friends. Uh, we love crypto. We thought maybe we'd just talk about it, talk about it a little bit. Um, where do you want to start? Do you want to look at, like, uh, volume over the last few days? Or, you know, what do you want to get started with? Well, listen, Chad, this has been a pretty uh, amazing week we had in Bitcoin. We're seeing... Uh, bullish follow through basically of this long drawn out pattern that we gone through the last two weeks of August there mm -hmm. um, I'm a very impressive move today on a Saturday on what we all consider to be essentially a low volume holiday weekend but brought us some nice moves in not just Bitcoin but you know on some some of the alts as well I should say some of the alts as well mm -hmm. but with this move, we're almost moving one step closer to, you know, kind of the next areas of major resistance that we're kind of watching to see if this trend can kind of barrel on and continue through. You know, mm -hmm. we've achieved some very positive uh, bullish momentum being able to break through key areas of 7,000 again. And, you know, once we were able to get about 6,800, that brought in our 7K. We've actually back tested a couple times on these pullbacks that have been definitely enough to kind of clear the market and allow this mm. progression to continue. So although we're trickling higher, um, the stability of this move and the kind of steady step-by-step -step has been notable. question is now, what kind of a pullback are we going to experience now? Mm. We can clearly see that, you know, on, on the, the hourly here, at least our middle BB has acted as support mm. when it's been tested at least the last three times here. And then even when we break it, as long as we're able to hug and support our lower BB, mm. we can't move higher. So we haven't really seen any major volatile moves. Every big pop we have seems to be no more than, you know, $150, $200 or so. But you have to mm -hmm. ask yourself, are we setting ourselves up for, you know, much bigger volatility yet to come? So basically, it's kind of like a controlled rise. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're saying? Essentially, it's just like a little slow kind of moving like up channel here. Um, I don't recall a time in these up trends we've had where we've had a minimal amount of very big green candles, mm -hmm. you know, some nice moves, but we have had experiences where we've had five, six, seven hundred dollar moves in Bitcoin mm. in a day. And it mm. feels like it's been a while since we've experienced something like that. Do you want that? I mean, like, is that what you is that? That's what you want, right? That's what traders want. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. As traders, those are the kind of movements where you can get yourself either in overbought conditions or oversold conditions. And that mm -hmm. basically sets up your good risk versus reward trades mm -hmm. that all day traders and scalpers sort of thrive on. You know, mm -hmm. those moments where, whoa, that was a huge moment of move. And what kind of happened there? Are we oversold? Is the market a little too down on itself as it's creating opportunities mm -hmm. uh, to either score a short scalp or long. If you've been long this market, you know, the past couple of weeks, you've had to withstand some pretty, you know, big pull downs. And, and we had a lot of bottle candles kind of as we were in, in, in August there, as we're going to the last week of August there, um, a lot of stability and kind of bullish momentum. The volume came in a little bit, you know, we were able to hold, at least over four and a half billion for several days that kind of allowed us to get this momentum we basically got ourselves out of that three billion zone which we had been in for several days in the month of august so the volume increased slightly and that was able to bring us up even in this low volume environment is there anything you want to show us right now or what, what do you anything you have in mind or what do you think well you got your, your chart up why don't you uh I mean, you want to get to my chart? Yeah, I mean, we can get to that. I'll just kind of give just a brief opinion. Uh, so clearly, 
uh, I have a lot of lot of uh, marks here. This is from Bitfinex. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up Coinbase just to be a little cleaner. We had a t basically. I'm gonna zoom in and show you. We had a tweezer top that looks like it got validated. So we had a tweezer. Pardon me. We had a tweezer top on the 28th and the 29th, I believe. Yeah, 28th and 29th. So we even validated that with the candle closed yesterday above. So that's a good sign. And, and interestingly enough, we had a prior tweezer top uh, on the 25th, 26th, also invalidated. So what we're seeing is a period of continued consolidation. Uh, we are holding the 8 EMA for now. So it is a nice steady rise. We have the 834 EMA cross. I think that's uh, something to take a look at. I know, Big Chonis, you've been taking a little closer look at some of the oscillators, uh, some of these uh, in indicators. Is there anything you want to kind of talk about, or, or what do you think? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, we all use our own indicators that we're very comfortable with and comfortable using. You have yours. I have mine. I've been watching uh, some of the more bullish trends as some of my, my EMAs and MAs um, have been basically confirming bullish, and that's something that – um, I've noticed several days ago, and that's something that has kind of played out on this move here. And what we're looking at, what I've been watching is sort of this fanning out pattern of our EMAs where we kind of begin to break bullish and spread out um, our you know, movements there. And what that's allowed uh, kind of us to do is, is allow some breathing room in the price action here where we can really open it up mm. and kind of come back down and basically test our supports. Now, as we go higher, we kind of want to wait for our, you know, EMAs, MAs to kind of catch up because mm. they're coming to allow this move to kind of move forward. So I have the four hour chart up here. We can basically see that, you know, the price can break through our Bollinger. We do break through if we break through really big, you know, no more than a candle here. We were able to ride up it on several candles, but mm. still pretty much hugging it along the way, mm. you know. This little bit of a tightness compared to this area definitely was allowed to bring in this move. But once again, mm -hmm. when we close outside of the Bollinger for, you know, no more than one or two candles mm -hmm. in the four hour, mm -hmm. it just shows a time where the, 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 the price and the chart needs to correct, needs to come back in. A little too bullish there. But as long as we can kind of hold this pattern of basically finding support on our lower BB and resistance on our upper BB with this trickle up movements, we can continue. Now, I'm watching three areas here. I'm watching our first support area are you made 12 to keep this bullishness going and that's right around seven thousand eighty nine dollars mm -hmm. and that would basically correspond to holding support in this cluster mm -hmm. of resistance mm -hmm. that acted for several four-hour candles right before mm -hmm. we act broke bearish um did a little mm -hmm. kind of inverse h and s here and then popped up mm -hmm. probably completed that pattern here so you know we're just consolidating after this movement here but we mm -hmm. are putting in higher highs so so it actually would be wouldn't it even be significant to actually break that like that support is almost given now that that should be support like to break it is noteworthy. Give, you see what I'm saying? Given the size of those candlesticks you just showed on, you know, mm -hmm. when we broke that level, that's pretty much a good, good bet to hold at least for one bounce. You see what I'm saying? Broke this level at 70. Yes. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That that level should hold at least one a one bet minimum one bounce attempt that level should hold. Right, because it had it had been strong resistance yep. for several four hour mm -hmm. candles, and that's notable. Mm -hmm. And it became a neckline instantly. Mm -hmm. And then when we broke bullish from it, you're mm -hmm. right. So we're doing that back test. We'd expect mm -hmm. that, which means we can come down another fifty, but look, sixty dollars. Hey, look at that! Look at the volume trend. Look at the volume trend right from the Our second peak of the decrease. Yeah, yeah, so, so I've so I mean that, that too. pattern. The pattern's nearing completion. You right? That shows you that within probably three, four candles, you're probably going to see this pattern. Uh, hit its pivot, right? Hit its kind of decision point. Well, if I can br br bring up a few more indicators here. Whoa. Like, I know, laser, uh, light show. La laser light show. <laughs> put put your, uh, your sunglasses on there, you Chad. Got it, you got it. Um, so, all right, this is what I'm kind of looking at here. This is kind of yeah. like what I'm counting here. And this is basically a couple things here. We're trying to figure out really how extended this can go because we definitely have this tight rising wedge of price action here. It's mm. pretty much confirmed. Mm. We're getting tighter as we rise on our equilibrium mm. and we're hitting key 
Fibonacci extensions mm-hmm. based on kind of my Elliott count here. Okay, from, where's the bottom? On, well, where are you starting your count from? Show me the, like the So beginning. our bottom is literally our nut low from this entire move. It happened mm-hmm. on August 14th. Okay. It was right here at 5898. It was okay. the wick bottom. Okay. And that actually brought us a very quick snapback right. where we went for, that was almost our last really big move, but we went okay. 59 to, so almost so like hold on. What? So does Fibonacci care about a head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders? Like how does that how does that how does that you know interact? Uh, they're separate. One is a pattern. One are are basically um, extensions of an actual up swing low to swing high, basically. Okay. And again, these are all kind of subjective here. This can be wave one, but this can actually be a bigger wave one if we're going actually a much bigger wave. Mm -hmm. That's why I actually have several areas where we could actually top off. Mm -hmm. Still hugging, though, this is what's important. We're still hugging the pattern. The pattern Mm -hmm. is this kind of rising wedge of price action here that can bring us very tight. And we've seen this before. We we saw something similar to this pattern Mm -hmm. here. Hmm. Um, and if this but is go back, go the, back, go back, aren't we kind of we've broken some a significant we've broken these prior two humps. You have the the two left and right shoulder. It's significant now that we're trading above those those two areas. Well, is yeah, not, I'm looking at this thing on a major no, the inverse 67, head. 67, 68. You see those two humps back there, uh, July, right? Significant that we're trading above your orange box, right? Isn't that sure. kind of the point you're illustrating? Well, not just that, is that we broke it, we back tested it, and it fell. Yeah. That actually allowed us to go higher. Mm, So our mm. trend is still in this angle here, Mm. and we can still go. Now, listen, we've only come to about halfway Mm -hmm. of a. All right, so I've I've done a count of this last fifth wave here, if this is a fifth wave, Mm. and I basically have one, two, three, four. I'm still mi- missing my fifth here, uh-huh. and that brings us to maybe 73. But 30. where's your four pull back to, though? How do you know where four? Like, how do you know where four is? Okay, so I basically have a very clean one or a one. A, well, really, it's this is one. This is our two. Comes back to 72.50. Sorry, 62.50. Mm-hmm. Our wave three, which extended all the way from one here, mm-hmm. basically makes this a clean. Yeah, we got 1.168 to 1.786. So a beautiful wave three okay. off of our wave one extension. Why? Very, so because it's a 168. Because it hits a very clean fib that's an extension one? of the first okay. wave. This yeah, wave yeah, 1618. That's it. So okay. by hitting $7,100, uh-huh. that was a very clean, bullish target. Okay. Now, our comeback allows us to get back no no lower than mm-hmm. somewhere in our wave one. Now, this can be one and this can be one. Either way, we're still validated because we actually bounce very wave hard. One, but also necklined. Would you, would you just only look at Elliott wave or would you look at the neckline that you broke prior and think that's my, my logical support? Well, again, the, the neckline really had corresponds to a pattern. Right, 65. I mean, obviously, you look at you see you can see a neckline even if you're an Elliott wave trader. You see the neckline 66, 6700, right? Well, yeah, but the neckline also corresponds with holding at least above where we topped off on our wave one. Yeah. And this, this thing yeah. because we were able to hold here, mm-hmm. this validates one of two things: mm-hmm. that a we can basically top off around 73, 74, mm-hmm. and call it a day, and then wave we five. go down. Or unless it's a wave five extension. Or or we can actually do that, come down no lower than somewhere around 7K, mm-hmm. and then actually go one more bullish wave higher to somewhere between, you know, it can Wait, be... Wait, so you're saying, seven, we, you're saying we could be still forming wave three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, sure. I mean, that's what that's interesting. It could be so many different things. It's possible. Now, there's a lot of things that can negate this pretty quickly. Okay. Again, this only makes sense if we can hold pretty much above 7K. We can go a little bit under. Mm-hmm. But if we start breaking down back into this must-hold area, yeah. 68 to 68, I mean, somewhere yeah. in the 68s, uh-huh. we start losing that, then this wave is clearly done, and I okay. feel we're now in a full correction mode. So wait, now, wait. So would that go A, B, C, D, E afterwards? Well, it would go A, B, C. There would be a ABC. three wave but in each three wave there uh-huh. would be some sort of a five wave in each three so our first down wave would uh-huh. actually be a which okay. would close of five actual but down how do you wave. know where a is gonna, gonna like find bottom how do you know where the bottom of a is well that's what our patterns come back in so that corresponds maybe to this line here of resistance okay that popped us off and here, here that's now become support so okay. maybe we back test that again it could be in this area horizontal support or trend line support exactly. or whatever yep 
And then I can follow in, you know, we go to higher time frames and I start looking at my Bollingers and see where's our lower Bollinger correspond to our overall pattern. Now we're still yeah. way low. We're down in the six Ks here. Oh, but yeah. our middle BB is right at six 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 wow, six 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 six. Ooh, that's uh, oh wow, that's oh <laughs> good change. It changed. We're good. <laughs> I could we're good. So, right. so again, that's what I'm looking at. I'm using longer term time frames yep, with yep. short term Fibonacci to uh-huh. get a sense of what we can still achieve. Now let's face it, people, a lot of this bullish momentum, a lot of this easy money's been made and frankly it hasn't been that easy. But we're right. just trying to get a couple hundred more bucks out of this at this point. Is there more downward pressure than upward pressure? And I want to well, look at my well, hold short. Hold on, hold on. Don't move real quick. I mean, if, can I comment on what your question is? If you look at the live, look at the volume candles. Look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, that's 10 volume candles, right? Seven are green. So mm-hmm. it's like you have to give the bulls an advantage, right? Just in the last, mm-hmm. in that snapshot. So you, I, I look at when you're trying to figure out who's got the edge, it's like the volume candles, albeit... Right, albeit it comes the, on the heels of that big uh, red candle, eleven candles ago. So, I, I mean, want to clearly, do something else. clearly, let me, let me yeah. before we move on, and then sure. Uh, sure. Sure. clearly, do we not do we not clearly have a bearish continuation pattern that broke bullish? Do we clearly not have like a bull a bear flag that broke bullish? We definitely had a bear flag until about until we we broke it somewhere. That's in what I'm set. saying. That's what I'm saying. So that so that's what that is, right? So 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 classic, right? Like traditionally, when you have, okay, when you have a, a, a bearish reversal pattern, like say you have a head and shoulders top, mm-hmm. and if you can break that head and shoulders top bullish, mm-hmm. that's like extra bullish. Right, There's right because extra, it invalidated this yes, head and shoulders that yes. we're all watching for. And Absolutely. arguably the tweezer top I showed you earlier in my screen. So it's like when you can kind of invalidate a signal, that's, that has right. extra emphasis. I'm thinking about um, the last time we broke bullish and we're mm. from bottom to top was exactly 30 days mm. and it also closed us out on a perfected nine of the we lost you for a moment yeah two days ago go ahead and can, hey can you repeat oh, i lost we, you for the last 10 seconds oh uh they actually heard me on the thing there oh, so apologies. yeah okay so we we were good there and but we just finished with another nine it wasn't a perfected nine because it actually closed not as the highest one mm. in the season like this one did or the lowest one like this one did but actually kind of lost that momentum until our last candle here so we're bleeding bullishly we're bleeding out our one to four candles Mm -hmm. right before this sequence commences hey do you see that right there that's almost a rising three methods do you see that the last uh it's almost a rising three methods it's just very similar to it we have the three small real candle bodies inside the two large almost two white soldiers See, see that and the three candle bodies in between rising it's very similar very close. It's like a cousin to a rising three methods bullish continuation pattern. I like how our BBs have spaced out a little bit here. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this kind of suggests right now that how how tight we can actually get on our dailies. What's that cross? Um, What's that MA cross you're showing me? You're seeing one of your early right. MAs well, is crossing. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, well, there's been a couple here. So this right, well, actually, take that back. Um, it was this candle right here where we were able to hold above my EMA 12, 26 and 12. And then they cross bullishly here. And then what this is, is my EMA 12 crossing up bullishly into my 55, which I think kind of was bringing on what actually happened with this candle here. Mm. Now, when you get these bullish crosses, again, not all play out the same, but and some are kind of laggers. Some happened before, but... but um, like for instance, when we cross bullishly here, when my first leading indicator, my 12 crossed mm. basically kind of through our middle BB. I mean, what's that your was eight? Really what's it. the yellow line? What's the yellow line? This one here, the, the lower bottom one. What's the bottom line? What is that? This is my middle Bollinger in my daily. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's oh, yeah. So MA 20, simple moving average 20. And what's your what, what yep. line crossed it first? Eight, it MA? was my MA, EMA 12. EMA, EMA 12, so, not MA 12. EMA. No, because I like to use some of my EMAs because they react faster to the price mm-hmm. action than the uh-huh. MAs do. Uh-huh. Um, corresponding with other MAs, like my bigger ones, my, my 200, my 100, my 50. Now, mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. bringing up the MAs there on our daily, you can clearly see our red MA 200, right? Back here, not getting through that. Back here, not uh, getting through that. Did we break Never, it? When did we break it last? Can we you... haven't broken through bullishly ah, since there our it is. February V bottom. Yeah. And when we fail to hold it, fail to back test break. Right. It's been it's been holding us down ever since. Wow. And 
even when we get close to it, you know, so this is my, my best case bullish optimism here is mm. if we can kind of begin to retest this, which well, we've done. Let me count. Forth. Let me counter argue. So so what's I see a slight difference in the last two attempts that in the second attempt, the upper Bollinger was able to pierce the uh, that moving average. Right. You see that. So that could be a sign of a kind of an early wave. You see how the upper Bollinger mm. there it mm. pier pierced a red line twice. So that that kind of and it, you show how the red line's flattening out. I think it's got a better chance now than it has the last two attempts to break it, without sure. doubt. Well, especially because it was at eighty six hundred then, and yeah. now it's down seventy eight. Yeah. So it's it's it's, give, it's it's gained. You know, it's easier, and you know, let's look at this kind of in in larger terms. And I actually have a, another another chart I can bring up if you can indulge me. Oh, actually, allegedly, before I do that, allegedly. let's. Let's just go over a couple RSI stuff you know, yeah. so we can kind of see where we're at here. So this is our mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. Now we're hit the 60 resistance on our daily, and that kind of corresponds mm -hmm. with a lot of chop we've had here. Mm -hmm. We hit it to the T right here. Mm -hmm. So it has shown historically that the 60 right here, a lot of history. Yeah, at arguably, very much arguably. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's two things. It either stops out moves like it did this one here, this mm -hmm. one, and this one until we could either break it and test it. You could it. upthrust. You could upthrust like you did back in May. You see May? You see this called the upthrust. You see back well, in May? That's this, So you temporarily break it and you come back. It's an extra bearish sign. It's what we talked about before. It's called upthrust. Well, it wasn't extra bearish. It well, I mean, not... just look at that compared to the spring. Middle of June. June 5th, 16th, that's called the spring, right? You see the RSI dips to 25. It mm -hmm. dips below. It's a spring, like it's a temporary, you know what I mean, a break below. Same thing with resistance. So it kind of, like it's almost like a, like a, it's a pushback effect. So you can, it's something to kind of keep an eye on. It's interesting. Well, if we can't get up over the 60, the thing that's that's basically sets the tone mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this is where we can break really bullish. Mm -hmm. You know, this this is where we can break really bullish. This is obviously where we can break really bullish. So mm -hmm. if we can get over 60, then there's a clear precedent to start talking about 70 and even into this well, really hold bullish here. Hold on, my friend. Hold on, my good my good uh, friend. So so how do you talk about 70? You still have the, look at those shoulders there on 66, uh, 68. It shows us that when we can get over 60, mm -hmm. the party can begin. Oh, party's already begun. Let's not lie. Well, this is where hearts are broken in the 60s. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> okay, I'll, so let, I'll let that one go. <laughs> all right, so look at the stochastics here, okay? How many days have we been up here, Chance? We've been up here for 10 days, yeah, yeah. 11 days above what have 80. We learned? What have we learned about stochastics? It's well less meaningful it's on a short bear, term, right? It's a, it's a bear short market. Yeah. yeah, but show me an eight day, ten days. We've been up here until we we just can't hold it up here, even when we've been really bullish. You know, April thirteenth through twenty fifth. That's eight days. What did the price do? It's hard to look at an indicator without the context of the price, though, isn't it? Yeah, but I know that it clearly corrected more than a wave pattern. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy with how this played out. And listen, this took a while. Look how long this trough was. This took mm. a lot of time here mm. for this to really recover. We bottomed out in our stoke beginning of August. So, so what does it tell you, though, about now, though, in the price? Doesn't this suggest a pullback? Yes, this suggests that we've had a lot of momentum get us to this far. It was a long haul struggle mm -hmm. all the way through August, mm -hmm. quite accomplishing here. But now we're hitting all these speed bumps that normally tell us you know, hey, hey, we got to correct. And listen, yesterday's candle, you know, that's a decent wick on top there. You know, that's a Is shooting it? star being vandal there. Not a it oh, okay. It's not a shooting star. It's like more of a, it's, it's more of a like, uh, it's closer to a Marabozo. It's closer to like a full green with no wick than shooting. Shooting star would have to be like almost 90, 90 to 95% wick. Yeah, but then the Maribozu has to be more like 99% body, and this is nowhere 99%. This you, is could argue, you could argue this is the beginning of like an advanced block, right? Where it's like the beginning of a three-candle pattern with a progressively smaller real candle size. But look at the, but here, but you see it's almost a, look, it's a, this is a bullish continuation pattern. Look at the rising three methods. Look at the last five days. It's pretty much a rising three methods can bullish continuation pattern where you have two big white candles and the three real three spinning tops in between them.
So, so I think I think you know I, th I think you're right though to point out your rising wedge, and it points out kind of how close we are to end, to kind of uh, potentially having to decide you know one way, way or another what what it's going to do. Well, you keep bringing up these three methods. How about these three soldiers? Oh, not, <laughs> where? <laughs> where? I don't see three soldiers. <laughs> I mean, what do you call these three guys? I see here, like right? I see maybe like you have a better argument for a triple bottom than for three soldiers. This is you could have, you have a much more much more logical bo argument for the triple bottom. Uh, Noah Patterson thinks this looks uh, no sorry. Uh, batter Al was on. Doesn't the weekly candle pattern look bearish to you guys? Does, yeah. does this weekly candle, which mm -hmm. closes tomorrow, mm -hmm. is bearish to you? Weekly candle, you want to pull it up for me? The compadre. It's right in front of you. It's, oh. This is what you're looking at right here. Oh, buddy. weekly. Uh, bearish. What do you? What do you? Are you? Are you? Uh, I disagree. I'll put it that way. There's no way that's bearish. Look how bearish this that's looks like. That's like Super getting dealt. That, that's like getting dealt. You know, pocket tens in a five-way hand. I mean, you can't go wrong. That's pretty good. Are you kidding me? That's like sixty percent candle body. You're, you're not. You're. What are you at the middle Bollinger Band? Look, look at. The, are oh, you we're kidding under, me? We're under it. We're, we're you've got. Resistance. You have three days of green. You have basically what you've done. You've closed above the prior day's spinning top. Okay, that is mm -hmm. a, a bullish sign. You are making way towards uh, the that big red candle from four days ago. Clearly, you're going to have to deal with probably the midpoint of that red candle, of that bearish engulfing candle. You're going to have to deal with it, but you're making slow progress to it. I think it's, I think it's, you know, I think it's good, pretty good. What about the fact that um, on our weekly mm -hmm. stochastic, High or we're low. Crossing bullish, right? Yep, good. And we're at tight e well, equilibrium. When's weekly, the one's weekly close. What day? Tomorrow. Oh, so it's, it's good, right? Like, like there, there's a danger in looking at a weekly close, you know, on a Tuesday. Look right? at our RSI here. Look, look at how it's mm. nice and curving right mm -hmm. here. It's like an Eve, okay. bo Eve bottom, rounded, curvy bottom. Hey, keep it PG-13 here, okay? PG-12, bro. <laughs> I mean, this is a good... At least what we're seeing here mm -hmm. is we're seeing a going from a super bearish to a flattened out here. Mm -hmm. And again, what? I, we're talking about here. Let's break our... We, we it's, just put it rounded level, right? it's just a rounded bottom. Yeah. It's just a I mean, it looks like a dinosaur egg, but it's also just pretty much a, <laughs> it's a rounded bottom. So what's our big target here? we got to put in... we got to break our 51 resistance. No, I go right? up. The big one's 57, where you got that... Oh, okay. uh, I have two rejections at 51. Yeah, but Can above that, above that, look at the March high and then the kind of, yeah. Look yeah, at but March. 55 on the weekly look would the, be like a yeah, 9,000 level. Bitcoin. It looks like it's going to test this and probably break it. It looks like, because if, if you buy into the fact that it's a rounded bottom, you have to expect it to break 52. And then see what it does with 56. I mean, that's, right. just, that's like, that's what's actually the more interesting in my opinion, the more interesting uh, question. Yeah, but it, between here and, and there, it's like a thousand bucks in Bitcoin. It is, what? but but it clearly has enough momentum to at least test it. But it's not as much of a foregone conclusion that it will test, you know, 56, 57 on, or 55. Well, let's yeah. bring that up, okay? This yeah. was our July move here in our okay. RSI, okay? okay? And this is our bullish August move. There's a big difference. And here. it's this quiet. This is quiet August, man. Are you telling me, like, you can't get a, a sl some slew of news? Um, well, look at this here. This almost looks the same. Uh -huh. a one crook, two crook, three crook. Yeah. One but crook, why two would crook, you compare two, you know, two or three pieces in a, th a thirty or forty puzzle piece, you know, uh, section? Why would you compare just those two little pieces? I How mean, about that? How about we come back here? We, we, there you we, go. Uh, right collab. there you go. And then the question right? is, what it does with the line? I mean, it's, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And then, again, this line also makes some, because if we break bearish, mm. uh-oh, then that becomes resistance. Then we're talking yeah, about... But it's hard to look at this in a vacuum, because it's hard to understand, because you have to also understand what the price has to be, is going to be dealing with in those RSI areas. If it starts to yeah. bounce, what is the resistance it's dealing with historically? Uh, well, historically, we can see what kind of a bottoming we had in 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, in 2015, right, in our RSI, mm. in our weekly. Mm. And, wow, I mean, if you look at it, mm. you know, we kind of got there. But this is where, this is really as low as we, well, we got. Well, if we break this, we if we break this. A lot lower. I'm sorry to interrupt. If we break this, that'd be pretty impressive. If we break this downtrend. Yeah. That'd be pretty impressive. It'd be a start. I, I mean, again, there's, it's hard to say that we've corrected fully from this. Again, I still don't 
we'll believe we have until we really break through much higher areas like 8,500. Then you got to start talking about we have officially put in those higher lows Mm. that we've been waiting for um, to see if we can do. Because what's happening here is the trend is such where once we fail to hold our MA200, okay, it's been resistance ever since. Back and forth there. So... Well, that's a lot to look at. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It is. That's it a lot, is. But I think that's a, just a wealth, uh, a wealth of information. Yeah. Let's do see. I have to swing here? Or are you good? Or do I just... Uh, just... Uh, 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 uh. So let me know when, when you... So I just want to kind of remind folks that I am Big Cheds. You find me on Twitter at Big uh, Cheds. This is my good buddy who's been talking and really kind of graciously sharing with us a little bit of his setup. Uh, I mean, you know him, you, you know him, you love him. We've been doing videos together for, for a while now. We have probably 40 videos together. And uh, I was hoping you, maybe you kind of spend a little time and tell me about your one-on-one mentoring program, Big Jonas. Well, listen, it's been great to have this evening discussion with you, Cheds, and everybody in the chat room, uh, 113 of our closest friends. And yeah, I'm uh, excited to be continuing my mentorships into September. August was a great month. Uh, met a lot of new people, uh, have some new students, have some new friends. So definitely uh, I feel what I'm able to kind of contribute uh, in our discussion. And that's why it's so kind of cool uh, that uh, the way I've structured it is because it's personalized. You know, not everybody has the same situation. Not everybody, everybody's in the same situation in terms of crypto and their experiences. So it's, a, it's an opportunity for, for me to kind of zero in on the specifics of what you want to talk about, what you want to learn about about based on your skill level you know all skill levels from the beginners to a little more advanced to kind of bring you to that level where you want to be and because it's personalized it it really helps specifically uh each person and that's why i'm happy to announce that i'm continuing it through september and if you have any interest in it please dm me on twitter or email me bigchonas at gmail.com favorite color big chonas uh my favorite color is I mean I, I'd say white but it's not really a cover so I'd say something like aqua blue something like you'd see in Greece like the white with the blue contrast I always love that I like it I like it thanks for joining us uh, it's always an honor I want to remind folks I am one of the six analysts and teachers at Bitcoin live this is the best in class educational platform for crypto I uh, I love being a part of it. I've learned a lot and I'm happy to teach you what I know. I do not know everything, but I, what I do know, I will teach you. And I'm one of six teachers. As I said, we have our webinars up on YouTube. Mine is on my YouTube page. Also at the Bitcoin live YouTube page. Please do check that out. We are recently uh, offering a monthly option as well as a quarterly option. You will see a sign up link in the video. Uh, I really love having you guys join us. I like to do, um, you know, 15 minute updates. I've been doing them now for the last few days uh, and I'll take altcoin requests. Big Chonus and I have done a lot of altcoin requests uh, and we'll get back to that at some point. But we really just wanted to uh, say hello. And and once again, I want to thank Big Chonus, who you can find on Twitter at Big Chonus for joining us today. It was a uh, gift. And uh, with that, any any parting words, my friend? Yeah, how about some thumbs up, dudes? Everybody in the chat room, we appreciate the thumbs up, and um, we hope to do these a little more often uh, as September uh, brings us some very exciting action in Bitcoin and crypto. Awesome, man. I really appreciate your time. Uh, And with that, I will uh, wish you all the best. This is Big Cheds signing out. Peace out.